Welcome back. I'm joined now with uh, junior Jeff Berman, who had the deciding win at the men's squash nationals two weekends ago. But um, some of you might not have known, that, but Jeff is a practicing Buddhist and he lives in Buddhist house right now. And last semester he was in Bodh Gaya, India. Um, so Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about that experience that you had last semester? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a really great experience. I was with about 35 other um, American college students. And uh, as you said, we were in Bodh Gaya, which is a small uh, rural town in the northern part of India. And we were living and staying in a monastery that's primarily used by Burmese pilgrims, um, since Bodh Gaya is the, the, really the major pilgrimage site of, of Buddhism. Um, they use it throughout the year. And uh, they're very kind to let our group stay there every year for two and a half months. And then the last month of the program is um, you design an independent study project, and then you can go anywhere in India to carry that out. So we traveled in small groups all around the country and came back to Bodh Gaya for one week. Uh, and while we were there, we were um, taking different classes from Buddhist philosophy, um, Indi uh, Hindi, and Tibetan language and also um, taking a meditation traditions class where we learned about you know, different traditions and also practiced them with the guidance of a few different teachers. So it was, it was great. Sounds awesome. And so when you're on the court, does any of what you learn, does anything that you practice come through? Do you try and integrate your Buddhism and squash playing at all? Yeah, I find that um, it's, uh, there's so many correlations between uh, sports in general, but um, competitive uh, endeavors, and just uh, being a member of a team. All, the, all these dimensions of athletics, I think, are largely correlated in um, Buddhism, meditation, uh, just any kind of self-reflective you know, practice in general. But I find that a lot of the um, ideologies and practices, tenets of Buddhism, are easily translated um, to squash and, and my experience competing. Um, easily, easily translated in theory. Sometimes in practice, they're more difficult. But, uh, but yeah, I found it really, really helpful in trying to deal with a lot of the different you know, challenges of, mm -hmm. of sports. Yeah, and so you were away for the beginning of the squash season. Um, what has it been like coming back and coming back to the States even more generally after your semester abroad? Yeah, it's been, it's been uh, really interesting. Um, I think coming back, I just I had two weeks after I got back from India before um, I went with the um, men's and women's squash teams to Arizona for our winter training. Um, so that was interesting just to have kind of a brief period back and I was still dealing with some health related things that I had picked up abroad right when I got back. So my time was kind of um, jammed short to try and get into some uh, remnant form of shape. Um, and then we had you know two day practices every day so it was busy and pretty rigorous. Um, so that was difficult in some regards just because I was totally out of shape and had no muscles anymore. Um, but at the same time, having the kind of regimentation to um, time and space, um, you know, to our day with our practices and our schedule, and also just being with the community that I was familiar with and people who were excited to see me and excited to have me back and competing again, that was really, really helpful and positive, I think, um, in terms of integrating back into, you know, American life and um, also in getting ready to receive the whole plethora of things that would, you know, came with the academic semester. Mm -hmm. And now that the season is over, how are you feeling being back at school, being back in your classes again? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm already missing, you know, missing the practice with the whole team and, mm -hmm. um, and being with everybody and the, you know, excitement and challenges of competing, which are things that I really value um, with squash and sports. But... Um, I'm also finding that, you know, it's, sports are such a huge time commitment that uh, my schedule is shifting a lot. It's nice to have more time to do work now and not be as crammed, but um, as, you know, my routines are now shifting again, I'm definitely feeling that some of the, I think, variable elements of my experience that maybe changed while I was abroad are showing up a little bit more, which, you know, makes some things challenging. Um, and uh, maybe some of the integrating I have yet to do is, is initiating now. <laughs> do you want to name some examples of those? Yeah, well, I think, uh, well, everything just from, you know, social dynamics and um, being part of 
the, as you said, I, I live in this program house, in a Buddhist house, so there's uh, 17 other people in that community. And, you know, during the season, um, you're just, I'm, I'm not there as much, and the weekends we're competing, so, you know, the, your social life is much more contracted. So everything from, I think, being in a new community of people living there and how I fit into that social dynamic to, um, you know, uh, academic work habits and also what I'm choosing to do with my free time. Having all of that shifted um, definitely is impacting kind of my day-to-day, -day, you know, mental space. How often do you get on the courts now that you're not in season? Uh, I haven't yet, <laughs> but I'm sure I will. I'm sure, you know, when we have spring break now coming up, when I'm home, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure I'll get back on the court. And I guess just because it's midterms, you know, everybody's busy and mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to get through all of that now. But um, I love being on court anyway, so I'm, I'm sure I'll soon. <laughs> great. Uh, well, congratulations on a great season. And nice. thanks so much for being on our show. Thank you. Um, we're going to go.